Becoming her came from a place of deep spiritual connection with God, learning about who he is, and really figuring out and asking him the hard questions as far as like, what am I supposed to do here on this earth in my lifetime? And recognizing that so much of myself was not in the right place. I was putting a lot of different things in God's place. And as long as I kept other things in God's place, I could never be and walk in the fruitfulness that God really had for me. I don't even know how to start. That's how long it's been since I've done a get ready with me. Truly, I feel so weird right now. I survived postpartum without going in a depression, which is a blessing and so just, I'm so grateful for because been there, done that, never want to go back. And so this postpartum journey has been not just fruitful, but really smooth and really gentle. And I'm so grateful to God for that. But let's talk, let's chat, let's catch up. Today I'm using like a few new products that I've never used before, but I've been waiting to try. So I was like, we might as well make this a whole new experience like video situation. So I'm starting off with this Jane Iredell. Not really sure how to say the last name, but it is a clean beauty brand. Y'all know I've been on clean beauty for years at this point. So I'm gonna first start with this hydrating mist. Ooh, that smells good. We love a hydrating mist, okay? And I'm gonna use also their Smooth Affair Brightening Face Primer. And I'm just gonna put some there, there. I'm also going to list everything that I'm using in this video down below because I'm probably not gonna like talk about each product or like even like mention it because I'm trying to focus on what I'm actually talking about in this video, which is I wrote a devotional. How did we even get here? <laughs> How did we get to the point where I'm out here writing people's Bible devotional, trying to tell people about Jesus and tell people about the Bible and God and Oh, it's still crazy to me. It, it, it really is. And I know so many of you have like caught on at this point of like kind of the trajectory that God has taken me. And yeah, we just out here now. Like ain't no questions, ain't no confusion about whose team we're on. Okay. Kingdom kids, y'all know what I'm talking about. Like what side of the line are you on? Okay. And if you don't know which side of the line you're on, you need to ask yourself, you need to go in prayer and really talk to God about what's going on because this day and age, okay. These times, okay. Are not to be played with. And so, yeah, I just have been really having this pressing on my heart to start putting out what God has been placing in me over the past like few years. I'm actually gonna use this rare beauty brightening thing. Ooh, look at that. There's like a silver like wand on the bottom of it. I think it's supposed to be like a cooling effect. People were definitely noticing like the shift and change in me. Can I see your makeup? You can say hi, go ahead, say hi. Hi. I see you was already in my lipstick. Mm -hmm. Where'd you get this lipstick from? Mommy, from the, um, from the box. Oh, from my box that you're not supposed to be in. Oh, yeah. Child, these kids. <laughs> For foundation, I'm going in with YSL All Hours Foundation. This stuff is the truth, okay? Like, this is like your special occasion, date night. I'm going to be taking photos or on camera or something. This is that foundation because it is like flawless, okay? Flawless. I'm going to underpaint. This has been my new kind of go-to way of doing my makeup. It's been underpainting, which is literally contouring before you put on foundation. So I'm using this one, this contour stick from LYS. Black owned, female owned at Sephora, also clean beauty. So I've talked a lot about my transition into being the woman that I am today. And that came from a lot of just hitting roadblocks as a person, not necessarily not receiving things that I had like desired or hoped for or dreamed of growing up. But it was like when I hit points in life where I started getting the things, like I started um, 
getting the things that I had always wanted and prayed for, but I wasn't able to actually embrace them or receive them. Like, it was as if I could not let go of the hustle and the grind and realizing that that wasn't necessarily a good thing. Like, I would reach goals and be in rooms and spaces that people would be just so like over the moon to be in and I would just be stuck in this mode of like how can I do more be more get more and that was the girl in me the that girl in me the one that's just like getting after it chasing hustling focused grinding whole like girl boss era which is so wild to even think we're really like out of that but like you know what i mean if you're a millennial you know what i mean like there was an era like a few years ago where everybody was just like exploring the idea of becoming entrepreneurs and like what it meant to like be a businesswoman in a real way and like not being satisfied with just like you know, basic and simple lives, but just like traveling and like doing things. And especially for me, I, I definitely fell into that idea of like, oh, I've got to like, you know, set my height super high and I want to like discover, not even discover, but I want to choose the life that I'm supposed to have and then work my way towards it. But the thing that I learned as I've gone through different phases in my life very quickly but i add like i became a mom and a wife of multiple kids in a matter of like four years within four years i got a husband and three kids and a bonus child very fast very big transitions and what happened was it forced me to look at myself as a person and not just this identity or or entity that was chasing after her dreams constantly. It's like, not to say that I was playing games or playing life before I had kids and got married and stuff, but it's definitely one of those things where like, I think a combination of, you know, getting married and all those things, but also like the pandemic really shaking up the entire world. And now I'm going in with the All Hours Foundation and just like having to like, really look at my life and like how I was prioritizing things and also just like in general like God was calling me to change and to grow and we all get to points in life where like God is like tugging at you and like showing you that like things aren't really working out the way that you thought they would and it's not necessarily because something else is wrong but it's because you're not where you're supposed to be yet and you're not the person that you're supposed to be yet and like that's a harsh reality because so much of of what we want to believe of ourselves is that like we're great we're we're doing awesome and even when we're not you know hitting the mark it's okay and it's not a big deal if we don't reach the goal and it's not a big deal if we don't you know keep our word and it's not a big deal if we fall you know fall into things that you know maybe aren't good for us but like everybody else is doing it so like why is it not okay for me kind of thing like we all have those personal convictions as to like somebody else might be able to do it but we can't do it you know and like but we still want to do it so we still do and then we end up hurting ourselves through the process of just trying to do what we want to do instead of what's really truly good for us and even when we do things for ourselves that are like we think are good for us like we think you know, going hard and building building our, our lives and focusing on our careers, the thing we're supposed to do and that we've done that well. But like, what happens when you do everything they told you to do? You went to college, you got the good job, you know, you did all the things and you're still not satisfied with your life. And I think a lot of us had to question like, what are we doing here when the pandemic happened? And so for me, spiritual growth was like, okay, I don't want to be this girl anymore. I'm ready to really embrace the woman that God has called me to be. But how do I even do that? <laughs> like, how do you even do that in a real way with God at the center without just like other people's opinions mixed in and your own self-doubt mixed in? Not to mention anything that, that the enemy is trying to like keep you, you know, bound to like 
how do you do that? Because it's like, it's one thing to know that you need healing or that you need, you know, to change. It's another thing to actually walk that walk, like really get into it. Don't just talk about it. Don't just, you know, romanticize about it. Don't put it off, but really be like, okay, I'm committing to changing and I'm ready to go. Like I'm ready to do this, God. There was no like tangible thing that I could like point out that felt like what becoming her feels like. Becoming her came from a place of deep spiritual connection with God, learning about who he is and really figuring out and asking him the hard questions as far as like, what am I supposed to do here on this earth in my lifetime? And recognizing that so much of myself was not in the right place. I was putting a lot of different things in God's place. And as long as I kept other things in God's place, I could never be and walk in the fruitfulness that God really had for me. And it was scary. Becoming the woman that God designed you to be is scary and it, and it feels painful. The journey is painful because you're having to kill so much of what you've built yourself up to be and what you've known. So a lot of people like run away from the journey because they're like, what you mean? I got to give these people up that have been in my life. I've got to stop, you know, relying on my job to provide for me. Like I've got to actually think about what my presence means outside of the dreams and hopes I have for myself, because that's not how we grow up. We grow up, everybody's like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And what are you going to do? And like, what can you do? And everybody just starts boxing yourself and others in ways that it's like, once you're boxed in, you can't get out, quote unquote. But it's like, you can get out. You can be someone different. You can transform. And a lot of people do transform, but they want to transform into things that they choose. Becoming her is about becoming the woman God chose, the woman that God designed, not the woman that we designed. And that comes with the death of hopes, the death of dreams, the depth of so many things we probably imagined for ourselves and of our futures. And for a time, it may feel desolate. It may feel isolating. It's, it's just part of it. But that's part of the journey though, because in order to really change and start new, you've got to tear it all down. And that's what I did. I tore lipstick and curls down. I had to look at myself, not just lipstick and curls, but Jade, and really take inventory of everything. And it's the self-awareness and accountability that people run away from in a real way. But that's the very thing that God needs you to look at because he can't build something new on a faulty foundation. He just, he won't do it. He won't do it. It's not him. Everything he does is good. So if you've got a shaky foundation, he knows that's not good. <laughs> One storm comes and, and your house gonna fall over and that's not good, that's not him. So he's got to help you and walk with you to tear down everything that you've built on shaky ground. Cause he, his word, who he is, is the solid foundation. And we may say that we believe in God and we go to church on Sunday and we do all the things, but it's not by our works, it's by our faith. So when push comes to shove, are you believing that God is your true provider? Or are you pressed about how you're gonna figure out how to make that extra amount of money to make rent at the end of the month? Like that's, and, and, and the thing is, people are like, well, God do doesn't want me to be out here, you know, struggling. He don't want me to be out here. Do you know that for sure? <laughs> do you know that for sure? Because what if God wants you to be struggling, not because he desires for you to stay that way, but because he needs to kill your pride. He needs to kill your, your obsession with possessions. And the only way to do that is to take it all away. Things are very different for me the way I see them because I recognize things in my children that I'm like, oh, so this is how we get this way. Like, this is when the lying starts. This is when the manipulating starts because kids manipulate. 
they manipulate. Not out of a bad place, but out of just like, they don't know better. And so we have to teach them like, hey, you can't, you know, force someone to do something that they don't want to do. I mean, you can, that's not what God de desires of us. God desires us to choose him, to choose love, to choose the relationships that we want to keep. And that's in all relationships, always. So it's like, even when it comes to like, you know, the person that you're with, your family, friends, people you work with, like how is God infiltrating all those relationships through you? And if you are still stuck on people pleasing and trying to make everybody happy all the time, then we got some work to do, <laughs> but that's okay. Because that's why I wrote Becoming Her. I wrote Becoming Her for the women out there trying to really grow, trying to really be out here operating like the kingdom daughters they are. Because when you're a daughter of the king, there's a standard and it's not about how you look. It's not about things you can do. It's about your heart. It's about what's coming from within you into the world. It is through you that God's kingdom comes to the earth. So are you up to standard? Is your vessel, is your host, is your body, your mind, your heart in the right position to be able to be used and to be able to walk and talk and, and breathe the kingdom to earth as it is in heaven? It's right now. It's happening whether you are blinded by the veil or whether the veil is being released and so that you can see it around you so that you can see how god is moving all around you how he is omnipresent in a real way how he is literally permeating everything and he's just wanting you to operate and connect with him and tap in with him in every sense of the word like tap in with him at your job tap in with him in your marriage tap in with him with your kids tap in with him at school tap in with him in all things and the core principles of becoming her are saying what god would say feeling how god would feel doing what god would do and being who god has called you to be while well, simple <laughs> These are things that are very difficult for a lot of us. And truth be told, have to be done in that order. Say, feel, do, be. Because if you do any of those things out of order, you're not operating in your free will the way that God has desired you to. Going in with this Ilya bronzer in Uptown. But the other dope thing about Becoming Her is that it's not just a PDF downloadable thing that you can get straight to your email. I have launched another podcast show and it is the Jade God Bolt Show. And it's pretty much gonna be anything and everything that comes on my heart that God says to tell y'all, okay? As y'all know, I've had a podcast with my twin sister. I have a podcast with my husband, Mark, where we talk about marriage and life and faith. And now, the Jay Godbolt Show. You can listen on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Going in with this Hourglass Palette, Ambient Palette. This is the Lighting Edit Unlocked in Tiger. Love this palette so much. I think this was limited edition, but I think you can still get this palette just without like the Tiger. Well, you might still be get, be able to get. I'm gonna definitely put it down below, link it down below. I'm basically gonna mix these two together. And I'm taking this all the way up on my on my whole like face here. It's kind of been a thing I've been doing that I think looks really cute and kind of gives a different dimension of color to your face. See, isn't that pretty? Kind of looks like more than I actually did. I learned that on TikTok. Speaking of TikTok, y'all should definitely follow me on there. That's where I'm posting the most these days is like on TikTok, still on Instagram, but really on TikTok a lot more. Cause I feel like TikTok is a, is a bit more democratic, okay? The algorithm isn't as choosy as it is like on Instagram. And I appreciate that. <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty. Actually, I feel like I did a little bit too much on my nose. I'm gonna blend that out a little bit. I also got a few of these new Rare Beauty like highlighters. This one is in Flaunt. I think that's what I'm going to go with today. It looks really pretty. I think it's going to blend really nice. So I'm going to take a little bit. Look at me acting like a beauty influencer. Ooh, that's pretty. Listen, I don't care what y'all say. And I also don't care that it's not 
2016 anymore. But when a highlight pops, it pops and it needs to have its own moment, okay? <laughs> this is popping, all right? We still love a good brow bone moment with a highlighter, even in 2023. I'm gonna take a little bit in my inner corner too. What am I gonna do for lashes? I feel like for my lashes, I would, I'm gonna do a, a very, very natural lash. I got these from Amazon. I don't even know what number or anything they are, but they're like a very, very natural looking cat eye. Cause I don't know, I don't know. I feel like we are entering the era where like the big, huge lashes are not a thing anymore. Like they're slowly but surely coming out of trend. I've always been a fan of like a more natural look. And I think that the younger Gen Zers also like a more natural look too. So I also put on a little lip liner. This is the Huda Beauty lip contour in the shade Flirt which is just like a little bit brown, not too deep. And I'm gonna add some of my Exa Beauty. This is their mascara, their 1018 Lash Amplifying Mascara to my bottom lashes, just a little bit. I actually really, really love this mascara. Look at the wand. The wand is so like, is so thick. So on top of this, I'm gonna use this Rare Beauty. This is their Matte Lip Cream in Elevate. It smells good too. Mm, that is pretty. I thought I was gonna wanna wear a gloss today, but I really like this the way it is. For accessories today, I got these little earrings from ASOS. So cute, they're like little suns. And then I got this little chain necklace. This is from Eva by Eva Marcel. I think it's her Instagram, but Eva from Real Housewives, from America's Next Top Model, like that Eva. She has a jewelry collection line, such cute stuff. This is, that's where this necklace is from. Then this necklace right here, a friend gave me, it has the letters A, S, and M, and M <laughs> for the babies, so, Ariana, my oldest daughter, my bonus daughter, Sarai, Micah, and MJ, one M, you know, <laughs> for them both. And then this little chain is from Target, I think, or something, something chill. But yeah, that's the jewelry. I'm also wearing this watch that I got from Vitae London a long time ago. It's super cute, very like feminine and dainty. Then I'm also gonna do some Rings, these are all from ASOS as well. Rings, done. This blazer is also from ASOS. I got it a long time ago, I think it's ASOS Design. And I'm really just wearing a white tee. It's actually a maternity tee. <laughs> and some leggings, some black leggings underneath. Nothing too intense, nothing too serious, but yeah, I am so excited for you all to tap in to my new podcast, The Jade Godbolt Show, and my new free four-day Bible devotional called Becoming Her, Breaking Down That Girl You Built to Become the Woman That God Designed You to Be. Get it now. You can go to my website, sign up to get it to your inbox from there, and then once you actually get it to your inbox, we will be in communication for a few days after. I wanna make sure that you stay on track you know, listen to your devotional in the morning, get your journal time in. I made a playlist for your journal time as you work through Becoming Her. And as always, would love to hear your feedback, your thoughts. This is clearly my first devotional I've ever written, ever put out. It's a little nerve wracking, but you know, we trust in God over here. We have faith. We're not operating in a spirit of fear, okay? So I am just doing what I was told to do. I'm being obedient. I'm sharing it with you all. And I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Make sure you leave me a review wherever you're listening to the podcast. Email me all the emails that you get from me. You can respond directly to. So if you respond to the emails from me, I will get them directly and we can chat and discuss things more. So yeah, I'm so excited for you to start this journey. We're in this thing together, sis, and I cannot wait to chat with you soon. Bye. 
Hey sis, thanks so much for watching this video today. Make sure you are a part of the private Facebook group, The Becoming Her Sisterhood. We chat in there. We also do private devotional sessions in there and so much more. Can't wait to see you in the group.